الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد الله تبارك وتعالى tells us in his glorious book in Surah Al-Anfal chapter 8 in verse 74 بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين آمنوا وهاجروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله والذين آووا ونصروا أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم مغفرة ورزق كريم but those who have believed and immigrated and fought in the cause of Allah and those who gave shelter and aided, it is they who are the believers truly. For them is forgiveness and noble provision. So this is one of many verses that appear in the Quran that describes the properties of believers. Because not everyone can claim to be a believer. Allah put the criteria of what it is to be a mu'min, to be a believer. So this verse has five, you know, five uh, qualities that Allah says, if you have them, you are a true believer. So inshallah, we'll, we'll take them in pieces. So the fir- first part, وَالَّذِينَ amanu, The ones who believe. That's, that's the first condition, is you have to believe. And a believer, a mu'min, is a degree in knowledge, in manners, in behavior, in beauty, in charity. You know, this title of a believer is, belongs to somebody who knows Allah. Who knows Allah is the creator, Allah is the provider. He disposes all affairs, everything is in his hands. He, you know, this believer knows why he is on this earth. What is he supposed to do? How is he supposed to behave? And where is he going after this life is done? So a believer possesses the knowledge that will make them steadfast and obedient. Because knowledge that does not make you steadfast on Allah's orders is useless knowledge. So these are the first quality, amanu. They believe. And this belief is an action, not just by words. You have to prove that you actually believe. The proof comes in the second one. Wahajaru, and they immigrated. Now, hijra and immigration in the uh, narrow scope of, you know, when this verse was revealed, was from migrating from Mecca to Medina. But this door is closed. I mean, that, that hijra is done. But the wider meaning of hajaru is immigrating from any environment that looks like Mecca to another environment that looks like Medina at the time. So it's immigration, it's moving, it's, it's motion. You're moving from what displeases Allah to something that pleases Allah. You're abandoning it and moving somewhere else where you know, it pleases Allah. So if the profession that you have does not please Allah, when you choose, you know, you immigrate by choosing another profession that is legal and it pleases Allah. You immigrate from a group of bad friends to a group of righteous friends. That's what hijrah is for us, for the rest of us. You immigrate from an environment that's not fit to raise your kids. If you want to raise a believing children, You cannot have them in an environment that is not going to help you do that. You need to immigrate to a place where you can preserve those children and raise them appropriately. You immigrate from a luxurious living where you have everything that you want, but it does not help you practice Islam. You immigrate from that. You leave it. You leave it behind for the sake of Allah. You leave it behind and you move to a place where you can practice your faith. So immigration is motion. You put your faith in action. And faith without action is meaningless. It's just words. So this motion is a manifestation of the faith that you have. The more faith you have, the the higher level of an iman, of a mu'min that you are, the more motion that translates in your your day-to-day activities. The third one is وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And they strive for the sake of Allah. 
Now, jihad, you know, a lot of us, you know, when, when they hear wajahadu fi sabillah, the first thing that comes to mind is fighting for the sake of Allah. That's a very narrow, that's a narrow piece of it. The bigger meaning of jihad is exerting every effort to please Allah. Fighting is part of it, but there is so much more to it. And putting the effort in accordance with Allah's legislation. Waking up for Fajr requires, you know, requires effort. You know, the, you're comfortable, you're sleeping, and now it's time for Fajr. It, you know, you're making mujahada against, your, against yourself. You're forcing yourself say, no, I want to please Allah. So you put that, you're, you're striving to please Allah. Lowering your gaze when you're walking out, especially in the summer, requires a lot of effort. It requires a strong will that I will not look at something that displeases Allah. Holding your tongue from backbiting and slandering others requires effort. It's very easy to sit and talk about people. It's very hard to restrain yourself and say, I will not partake. All of this is jihad. These, these are from the, from the meanings of the word jihad, from, from putting the effort. In matters of financial dealings, it is very hard to do business the right way. Because to do it the right way, there is no lying, there is no stealing, there is no cheating. There, I mean, you have to observe all that stuff. You have to fight your inclinations for a quick gain in order to do it the way Allah Taala legislate. All of that is part of jihad. So it requires effort and a strong will. And that's what a believer has. A mu'min has a strong will to, you know, make him on, you know, stay on Allah's straight path and not stray from it. Now, two verses before that verse, Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَهَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ So there's an addition to the وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Now, وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ So that verse gives us a little bit more insight that these people, when they perform jihad, they're performing jihad with their wealth and with their person. Amwal is anything that can be owned. It's not just money. Anything that you can own. Could be your car, could be your house, could be your money, could be your investment. Anything that could be owned falls under amwal. And amphos is the person, is, is you. Is your, your reputation, your effort, your clout, your position. These are all part, and including your life, and your life is part of it. So when you put both of these components in Allah's service, and you strive to please Him, that's what, what the uh, al-mujahidun fi sabilillah. That's from the meaning of that of that term. So do not limit jihad to fighting. It's much much more than that. It it covers every activity from the moment you wake up. You know, you open your eyes in the morning till the moment you go to bed. You're in constant jihad, especially in an environment like this. And the last two qualities, وَالَّذِينَ أَوَوْ وَنَصَرُوا Those who give shelter and aid. So this is directed towards believers who are already in a good environment. They're already in a good environment, so their role is to support those who are in trouble. They support others with life's necessities. They donate. You know, because they, they, you know, they have a good environment, so now their job is to look outwards and say, do we have any other brothers that need help? And could be same neighborhood, could be other countries, could be other, you know, other states. You know, so they, they support others with anything that they need. And they defend the innocent who are in trouble or under attack. So that's the quality when you look at in, in the history of Islam, you had Muhajireen and you had Ansar. You had the ones who were prosecuted and were, you know, had to leave Mecca with nothing on, on them, on their person. And then you had the people in Medina who were already believers. They accepted them in, they supported them. So you'll always, in any Muslim environment, you'll always have those two groups. You'll always have the people who need help and the people who can provide help. And to be a mu'min, a true mu'min, 
you have to combine, you know, you have to have one of these qualities. So in that verse, two verses before that, Allah says, وَالَّذِينَ أَوَى وَنَصَرُوا أُولَٰئِكَ بَعْضُهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ بَعْضُ So it adds, adds a, a little bit, another dimension to the awa wa nasaru. They are allies of one another. So awliya, the, you know, the you know, supporters of each other, that term carries meaning of love, meaning of care, meaning of protection, meaning of equality. You don't, nobody sees themselves above another person. It has meanings of defending, cooperation. These are all from the meanings of awliya. So, وَالَّذِينَ awa wa nasaru, Those who are not prosecuted and can help, they collaborate. And that's from the quality of believers. They collaborate with each other. They advise each other to what is best. They protect one another. If you don't have those qualities, don't claim to be a believer. Because Allah was very clear that a mu'min, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ Truly, they are the ones who believe, who have those five qualities. And what do you get? لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْكٌ كَرِيمٌ They have forgiveness from Allah and a reward that is risk kareem. Kareem means it's, it's effortless. When a believer enters Jannah, you don't have any bills. You don't have to go to work. There is no wife that's going to drive you crazy. There are no kids that are going to, you know, make you crawl up the wall. Every, there's nothing that ruins enjoyment. That's what Rizqun Karim is. You bear all of the, the difficulties in this life so you can enjoy eternity. And Allah says you have Rizqun Karim. Karim is, is, is beyond any imagination that you have. So... This critical verse gives us these five qualities of true believers for two purposes. As a measure and a goal. As a measure to, to, so you can, where am I from this verse? Do I strive for Allah's cause? Am I a believer? Do I know why I'm here? Am I doing everything I can? And then if you fall short, you know what the goal is. So you work on improving yourself to reach that level to reach that status of mu'min because the status of a mu'min is a is a is a great title now the brothers that have gone have an md next to their name how many years did you have to suffer before you can put that md after your name 20 years 30 years you had to go through High school, you have to go through college, you have to, to get certified and board and graduate school and this and that. You had to go through a lot so you can put an MD behind your name and be able to write a prescription. Do you think the title, a believer, a mu'min, is any less than that? You think you can just, if, if you go in and put an MD after your name and you're not a doctor and start practicing medicine, what do you think they'll do to you? They'll throw you in jail. You have no right to put that MD after your name until you have paid the price of having that. So you think the title believer, mu'min, is any less than that? You think you can just say, I am a mu'min, without putting your due? So inshallah, focus on this verse. And focus. And there are many verses that give even more qualities of what a believer is. As a measure and a goal. So ponder this verse and ask, where am I in this verse? And work on what needs to be done.